G'day guys, welcome back. So we're working on the ute again today. Uh, I've got a fair bit done. Um, next up, we're gonna start working on the radiator, um, thermo fan, radiator hoses, and try and get all this uh, this sort of, this area here squared away, so we know what we're doing. Um, so, mind the shed, she's a bit of a mess. We've got crap going on everywhere. So what we've got here, we've got our uh, eBay radiator. Um, it's nothing more than a three core V8 VS Commodore radiator. Um, in my experience, the Chinese radiators, the eBay stuff, I don't really seem to have too much problems with it. Um, it's more the thermo fan itself. Um, so I generally run decent thermo fans. So for this car, what we have is a FG thermo fan. Um, I absolutely love these fans. They literally work on everything. They're just, they're just awesome. Um, I run one on this thing. Um, same thing, eBay six cylinder Commodore radiator with a FG thermo fan has no problems whatsoever keeping cool. Um, the blue ute with the LS turbo in it runs a V8 radiator, small block chef radiator, I think it was in that one, with a FG thermo fan. Um, the silver HQ, I set up an FG fan on that as well. Um, so I really like these, they just, they just work. So what we'll do is we'll uh, get a basic idea just sort of mock it up on the radiator and just see what trimming. So there's definitely trimming required. Um, you know, we're putting a Falcon thermo fan on a Commodore radiator. Um, two completely different cars, different shape radiators, different different everything. So what we'll do is we'll uh, basically lay it over the top and straight away we can see that the FG fan is actually wider, well, wider than the uh, Commodore radiator, which is no big deal. So what we'll end up doing is we'll just centralize it up the best we can um so what i'll do so we'll just get that sitting on there just work out roughly which way is going to work the best um it's pretty central really so it doesn't matter you can put them upside which whichever way there's no real up or down it just the fan's still going to spin clockwise so it doesn't really matter um it's more power here's your uh your, your on off your power um so basically our issue will be modifying it to fit the radiator end tanks, so the radiator hoses. So we have a fill on this side, so we'll just notch that out. That's fine. This one will end up notching a hole, which will come just down here. So what we need to be weary of is how much room we've got between this and the top radiator hose, which isn't a problem. We can just remove this section, but we don't want to be left with an ugly looking section. But worst case, I can just remove all that, put a tin plate over it, paint it, you'll never see it. If you want to get really, really technical, you can probably fiberglass it in, but you know, we're probably not going to go that far. Um, so, and the bottom one here is not so bad. So what I'll do is I'll get all these mounts trimmed up and um, we'll sit it back on and just see exactly what we're going to trim. So we'll come back to this one. All right, so I'll get them trimmed off and we'll come back. Okay, so I've gone along and I've trimmed these mounts down. Um, we won't be using any of those. Um, I don't know what this is, it's something to do with the high-low switch, uh, but basically because we're only using one speed of the motor, we're going to bypass that. Um, I have done it before. I don't know what it is, I don't know what it does, uh, but I know that you can run them without it, so, you know, I'm just going to bypass it. Anyway, so cut this off so I can remove this. The radiator, the fan actually sits down both edges of the uh, radiator, which is great because it means mounting it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, so basically you can see here where this hole is going to be, so it's going to come into here, which is why this will be an ugly section. So what we'll do is we'll end up shaving that or put a plate over it or something, make it look pretty. Um, notch out this one up here, and then of course we've got the uh, upper radiator hose on this side. So I just dragged it across to see where it was going to fit. So what I'll do is I'll go and uh, sit that on where it needs to be, and I'll get a few cuts made, and we'll get that sat on there. Um, so I can sit it down over the radiator and then we'll work out our depth. So depth is also very important with a thermo fan. So as you can see, this is the top side. So we've actually 180'd it because, so this here will be at the bottom side just so it looks cleaner. Otherwise, if you go the other way, I'll flip around so you can see it. There we go. It uh, runs into up here and it's just in a really awkward spot. So you could make it work if you really wanted to, but to be honest, I'd rather just put it down the bottom. Um, I haven't got any thermo wiring or anything in the car, so it's literally just a matter of running the wiring to the opposite side of the car. 
or I could run it across the fan and cable tie it. Whatever, we'll get to it. Not a big deal. So I just think, my opinion, this side here looks a lot cleaner. I would rather have that at the top of the radiator than this side where you've got this thing. And uh, so we'll go with that. So what I'll do is I'll flip it, like I said, and I'll make some notches in it, sit it down over the radiator, and we'll uh, come back and see what we're going to do for some mounts. Alrighty. All right, guys, so got it laid on there. Um, drilled a couple of holes for the radiator hoses, just with a hole saw, uh, and just square cut the uh, filler. So it's sitting pretty square, or like pretty in line, I guess you want to call it, whatever the word is, you know where I'm going with it though. Uh, with the radiator, I'm pretty happy where it's sitting. So next up's going to be the depth. So we'll go to the side, and as you can see, as you can see, it's sitting up a bit. Uh, which is okay, so it is going to have a bit of a gap, so with these, well, we'll have to take these fittings off. They, um, they're for your auto cooler, which obviously we're going to run an external cooler. I, I never run them through the radiator, just for whatever reason. I just don't run them through there. I don't see the point. Um, so I'll get them trimmed, uh, and there's our height. So you have to be careful because the fan, uh, the depth of the fan, you would think this here would come right to the edge, but it doesn't. Um, I've messed up before and I've sat that hard on there and the fan nut, you can just see it in there, was touching the radiator, so I had to space that out. Um, but what, what I'll do is I'll end up putting a bit of pinch, pinch tubing or like um, some of that foam, um, single-sided foam or sticky one side foam on the other to seal up the gaps. Um, so what we'll do is we'll uh, measure so looking at that, we've got about 15 mil. So what we'll do is we'll take 15 mil off the edge and um, sit this down and get it sitting a bit squarer. So that's where we're at now. All right, so I'll get that trimmed and we'll get it back on there. Okay, guys, so we've got it sitting down there pretty damn fantastic. I'm pretty damn happy with that. Okay, so here's our gap. So what we have is about a 10 mil gap. And if you look under here, oh, there we go. We've got about that again of uh, clearance between that fan and the uh, radiator. So we really don't want to go any closer than that. That's probably enough. So like I said earlier, we'll put some foam in here to seal the edges up. Um, we've got enough room around all the hoses. I've trial fitted some hoses to make sure. What I'll do is I'll grind this down. I'll put a little blanking plate over that, make that look pretty. Um, same again, same sort of gap. And uh, obviously this here needs to come out a little bit, but that's okay. So now to mount this, um, there's a couple of ways. We can just run literally a simple tag from here to here, or we could um, TIG a plate on top of the radiator. So we could just put that out for a second. Um, we could TIG a plate across the top here to cover that whole area in, and then have the fan back on make this look easy but it's a little bit tricky um and then and mount that to it uh make some brackets we could mount that with little brackets on it um really there's there's quite a few different ways to make this work um there's no right or wrong way literally as long as the fan is stuck to the radiator um i'll have a think about what i'm going to do and i'll just do it and i'll show you what i come up with so but that's the majority of it um for the bottom side, we can probably just make some little L tabs off here. Again, that's the bottom side, you're not gonna see it. You could just go straight through here, um, which would be okay. Um, I'll have a play and we'll come back and uh, we'll see what I come up with. So, all right, I'll keep going. Okay, so we've got the radiator and fan all fitted up. So I went with a pretty simple uh, bit of aluminium on the top with a couple of pot rivets. Uh, pretty basic stuff. The bottom we just used a bit of L bracket and then um, welded it to the bottom of the radiator. I'll throw in a photo here. I've uh, got my mate Aaron at work to weld that up. Thank you, Aaron. So for hoses on the top, you can use an EA, EB top radiator hose and it, it's right. But I had a combination of 90s laying around, so I just decided to use it. So I've just used a bit of pipe in the meat in to join it. Uh, for the bottom, we've used standard LS radiator hoses. They all line up. Um, Normally LS's, uh, like LS Commodores have a coolant bypass, so I didn't have one, I, I had some pipe to fit, so I've just used a bit of pipe with some flaring on the ends to stop the hoses blowing off, but that will do. 
So you may notice the intake manifolds disappeared. Um, we've got a standard manifold on, the single plane's gone. So I have intentions of putting a Holly tunnel ram on the car uh, for that big wow factor. Uh, this is just temporary to seal the engine up, but um, I may get the car running with this manifold on it. We'll see how we go. But um, I have full intentions of putting a tunnel ram on it. I always did. So the opportunity arose, I got a good offer, so I sold it. And um, anyway, so for the most part, the rear end is squared away, but uh, we'll go over that in another video. So for now, next up will be the fuel system and the wiring. So we do have the holding EFI system to wire into it. Um, so that, that'll be the next video. So it's uh, January 1st today, 2022. Hopefully we have a better year this year, last year, was a bit rough, so hopefully we'll get this one out on the pad. All right, I'll catch you on the next video.